Let the Children March by Monica Clark Robinson, illustrated by Frank Morris. Civil Rights and the Children's Crusade, 1963, January 14th. Governor George Wallace makes his inauguration speech calling for segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. April 3rd, the first organized sit-ins take place at downtown lunch counters. April 12th, Dr. Martin Luther King and other protesters are arrested after leading a nonviolent protest for demonstrating without a permit. May 2nd, D-Day, the Birmingham Children's Crusade begins. By the end of the day, 973 young marchers are jailed. May 3rd, Double D Day. More protesters are arrested, most of whom are under 18. Commissioner Bull Connor authorizes the use of high pressure water hoses and police dogs to control the crowd. Close to 1,000 are arrested. May 4th through 9th, protests escalate as more adults join the marches. The jails are at maximum capacity with thousands of young people imprisoned. May 10th, Dr. King and other protest organizers reach an agreement with city leaders that begins the process of desegregation. The Ku Klux Klan holds a rally and the home of A.D. King, Dr. King's brother, is bombed. May 19th, the school board expels many of the student demonstrators, but a federal judge overturns the expulsion just three days later. 1963, Birmingham, Alabama. I couldn't play on the same playground as the white kids. I couldn't go to their schools. I couldn't drink from their water fountains. There were so many things I couldn't do. One warm spring night, my family went to church. We weren't there to have regular services. We were there to hear Dr. King speak. We were there to plan. He wanted to raise an army of peaceful protesters to fight for freedom. His brown eyes flashing fire and love, Dr. King told us the time had come to march. If I march, Mama said, I'll lose my job, sure enough. I can't march, Daddy said. I got a family to feed. The weight of the world rested on our parents' shoulders, but this burden, this time, did not have to be theirs to bear. I don't have a boss to fear, my brother said, or a job to lose. We can march this time. We'll be Dr. King's army, I said. I'll be fine, Daddy, I promised. Don't worry, Mama. Dr. King didn't like children being put in harm's way. He was a daddy too, after all. But he said that though we were young, we were not too young to want our freedom. Let the children march. They will lead the way. On May 2nd, a sunny Thursday, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, we all met at the church, dressed in our best, feet ready. In a silence so loud that all I could hear was my racing heart, we began to walk. Hand in hand, we marched, so frightened, yet certain of what was right for freedom. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm gonna walk on. Would I be hurt? Would we be heard? Would it all be worth it in the end? I wanted to run from the angry faces in the crowd, run from danger, run from fear. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, on and on we marched, we marched, we marched. Singing the songs of freedom, 1,000 strong we came. Hate dogged my heels all that day, its yellow canine teeth sharp, but courage walked by my side and kept me going. Disperse, or you'll be jailed, he shouted the first day. Disperse, or you'll get wet, the police shouted the second day. Disperse, or we'll release the dogs, the police shouted the third day. We did not disperse, we kept on marching, we wouldn't stop until things started to change. Hundreds of us went to jail on the first day, and even more on the second. My turn wasn't until the third day. After I was sprayed by water stronger than anything I ever felt, 
Rough hands pushed me forward and I fell to my knees in the police wagon. I was going to jail. Dr. Keene reassured our parents. Don't worry about your children, he said. They're going to be all right. Don't hold them back if they want to go to jail, for they are doing a job for not only themselves, but for all of America and all of mankind. That night, crowded into a cell too small for even half of the kids, we sang, We shall overcome. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, and freedom is coming. Our parents couldn't be there with us, but still we sang, wrapped in the proud and loving arms of our ancestors. I was still in jail, but we heard that the next day, and the next, more kids marched. The water hoses they used to sting us could not stop our fierce tide. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm gonna walk on. Turn the other cheek, we have been taught. Show love where there is hate. The world watched as hate bruised us. For seven days, we walked only in love. The jail swelled to bursting, and even President Kennedy took notice. Daddy said, the president received letters and calls about us from all over the world. Our march will become a memory, a small part of a larger story. But we had been heard, and the seeds of revolution were sown. Two days and nights I stayed in the jail. Some stayed even longer. When I left, I was tired and sore, and my dress was ripped. But my smile was as wide as the Mississippi River. I had made a difference. I'm so proud of you, baby girl, Mama said. Your march was what made them see. With nothing more than our feet, voices, and courage, we had done what others could not. Change what was right around the corner. We felt it like a cool breeze in an Alabama August. On May 10th, the great news rang out. Dr. King had reached an agreement with the white leaders of the city. Desegregation would begin. One month later, I was playing on a playground I had never been allowed to play on before. Two months later, my family ate at a diner we'd never been allowed to eat in before. Our march made the difference. We children led the way. Singing the songs of freedom, 1,000 strong we came. Thank you.